in the beginning, before mortals were gifted fire, before Zeus in the Olympians or Kronos in the Titans, before the creation of the earth, there was nothing, nothing but the great void known as chaos. And who was chaos, you ask? Well, she was the conscious void of nothingness before all matter came into existence. She was the first immortal. She was the beginning. One moment chaos was still, but in the next she began to quake. The roar of the rumbling void grew larger and larger. Ripples of energy were constantly released as all of existence shook. But suddenly everything stopped and the void became silent. Then there was a flash, an enormous explosion in case the void blasted outwards. And emerging from that explosion was the first generation, the Primordials. This was the beginning of gods and goddesses, the beginning of epic heroes and ferocious creatures, the beginning of Greek mythology. First to emerge from chaos was a dark-skinned woman covered in plants. She had a large bosom and green hair filled with thorns. This woman was Gaia, the primordial goddess of the earth. A moment after her emergence, Gaia studied her surroundings. Finding nothing, she began to create her new home by encircling herself with dirt. The orb of dirt grew larger and larger while a jungle of plants began to flourish and cover its surface. This orb was now Gaia's new form. Gaia was the Earth, and so the Earth was alive and conscious. Next to emerge from chaos was a dark-skinned man with rough diamond-like skin. This man was Tartarus, the primordial god of the pit. He glanced at the Earth and decided its deepest parts would be his home. So he dug a tremendous cavern deep within the Earth. This pit was surrounded by walls of solid stone and minerals, with the ceiling covered in drooping stalactites that were bigger than trees. The floor of the pit was carpeted with jagged hills of stones and rivers of magma. Pleased with his new home, Tartarus fused with his creation. This pit would in the future become the worst possible location in all of Greek mythology. It was named after its creator, it was the torturous pit of Tartarus. The third to emerge from chaos was a light-skinned woman with black hair that twinkled with tiny white lights. Out of her back were two black wings that shined just as bright as her hair. This woman was Nyx, the primordial goddess of the night. A moment later, the last immortal emerged from chaos. It was a man completely covered in shadow. Not a single trace of his skin could be seen. On his back were two black wings leaking a shadowy mist. This man was Erebus, the primordial god of darkness. With Erebus's sudden appearance, Nyx's eyes quickly found his stare. That glance was the first spark of something us mortals would always yearn for. It was love. While Nyx and Erebus were exploring their love, Gaia was lonely and so decided to bring new life to the Earth. Without any father, Gaia first gave birth to a fully formed man who stood eight feet tall. He had white hair that flowed like the wind and a great white beard groomed to perfection. He was fit, strong, and ridiculously intimidating. This man was Uranus, primordial god of the sky. Once out of Gaia's womb, Uranus began to form a dome that encircled the earth. It was light blue in color and stretched many miles away. He called it the sky. When the sky finished forming, Uranus took a deep breath and blew. 
Out of his lungs came the very air that all life would someday breathe. Satisfied with his work, he fused with the sky so he could watch all of those below him. Next to be born to Gaia was a bundle of invisible nature spirits. The moment they were born, the spirits scrambled into the earth and spread out to underground. Moments later, the earth began to shake. All over the world, great piles of dirt were emerging out of the earth. These piles were humongous as they reached for the newly formed sky. The invisible spirits were now visible to the entire world, and they called themselves the Oria, the mountains that stood tall. Last and third to be born to Gaia was a man whose skin tinted dark blue. His hair and beard were made of kelp, and growing out of his head were two pincer-like claws. This man was Pontus, a primordial god of the sea. Once out of Gaia's womb, Pontus took a deep breath and exhaled. Out of his mouth gushed gallons and gallons of water. Once covering 36% of the earth and water, Pontus stopped. This water was now his home. It was his domain. It was the sea. The same time that Uranus finished forming the sky, Erebus and Nyx were enjoying each other's company on Earth. When they noticed the blue dome above their heads, they grew curious and flew up to explore it. Immediately, the tint of the sky changed from blue to black. Tiny white lights could now be seen twinkling from anywhere on Earth. The colors of the world changed as well. Now everything was darkened and toned down. Nyx had just brought forth night to the sky, and Erebus had just brought forth darkness to the Earth's surface. This was the first of a cycle that would bless the sky for eons to come. And it just so happened that the other part of that cycle was about to be born. At the same time that the mountains grew out of the Earth, Erebus and Nyx gave birth to twins. A fully grown man completely covered in light, and a fully grown woman who had tan light skin, glowing yellow hair, and two golden wings. These twins were Aether, the primordial god of light, and Himera, the primordial goddess of the day. With the twins born, half of the sky regained its blue tinted color with the addition of oranges and yellows. Also, half of the earth became filled with brightness, making the darkness retreat. Aether and Himera's presence had brought forth the day. Having their fill of the sky for the moment, Nyx and Erebus decided to go explore their brother's cavern, deep under the earth. The added bonus of continuing to explore their love in a more private area was also motivational. With their leave to Tartarus, the entire sky absorbed the light of the day. Enjoying the openness and freedom of the sky, Aether decided he would make a home at the sky's peak. There he created a barrier which divided the highest point of the sky from the rest. Air from this part of the sky was now only meant for immortals to breathe. From here Aether could shine all of his light down towards the earth. He called this area the Upper Air. The apple didn't fall far from the tree for Aether or Himera. Like their parents, they too had fallen in love and were about to bring new life to the earth. At the same time that Gaia birthed Pontus, Aether and Himera gave birth to a woman with green-blue skin. Her hair was covered in kelp, and growing out of her head were two orange pincer-like claws. This was Thalassa, the primordial goddess of the sea and counterpart to Pontus. Thalassa would go on to cover the earth in 36% of seawater, unknowingly that Pontus was doing the same at the very same time. The raging waters of the two seas crashed into each other, alerting the two immortals. In the next moment, Thalassa and Pontus met for the very first time. Instantly, the two were smitten. They had just way too much in common not to be. And so the two waters combined into one giant sea. These were the primordials. Gaia was satisfied with her newly born children. Uranus was watching from the sky. The mountains enjoyed showing off how tall they were. Pontus and Thalassa were exploring the sea together in love. Nyx and Erebus were venturing in the pit of Tartarus. 
Tartarus himself was enjoying the quiet of his cavern. Ether and Himera were together in the upper air, bringing the day to the sky and light to the earth. And watching them all was the first immortal, Chaos. She had secretly hid a piece of herself on Earth so she could observe her creations and their future actions. Perhaps that was her plan all along. The Earth, the sky, the sea, and the cavern Tartarus were now created, but largely void of inhabitants. But soon the world would become filled with mortals and mortals alike, for the next generation was on their way. These children would begin a new chapter of epic events in the newly created universe. The firsts of this generation would have their names immortalized throughout time. It would be the time of the Titans. Hey, hope you enjoyed my first video. If you're interested in hearing more about mythology, fairy tales, or legends in the future, then please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you can't wait till the next video, check out my website where you can read more of these awesome stories. I'll put the link below. Till next time.